Thanks. So yeah, our site news is that we're a new site. So I'm going to use this as a chance to give a super brief overview of our site. Um, so this is just kind of a thumbnail of who we are. We're a pretty big group. We come from a number of institutions and we come from a number of di disciplines. And our study domain um, includes the seven counties um, that make up the Twin Cities metropolitan area, which also includes over 100 cities. Um, uh, it also includes over 30 different watershed management entities, um, hundreds of lakes, thousands of stormwater ponds. So Emily, you can sign us up. Um, and um, so our goal is to understand relationships between urban nature and people, both in the context of trying to understand how urban ecosystems respond to rapid environmental and social change, and also to try to ultimately inform approaches for addressing inequities and improving environmental outcomes for a diversity of residents. Um, so we're looking at this coupling between urban nature and the urban social system across scales of both. So in urban nature, we're considering scales from organisms on up to habitat patches, drainage networks, and landscapes. Um, and in the urban social system, um, we're considering um, actions from individuals up to groups, to municipalities, to the entire metro region. And we're really interested in how governance policy and practice influence the benefits and burdens that urban nature um, confer on a diversity of residents. And we have kind of four question areas that I'll briefly introduce you to. So in terrestrial habitats, um, we're exploring the impacts of urban contaminants on both the ecology and evolution of insects. Um, and we're also looking at the effectiveness of a new statewide um, program that is meant to promote uh, pollinator habitat in residential landscapes for transforming this region into a refuge for pollinators. We're also interested in understanding how diversity across multiple axes influences the resilience of urban forests um, in relation to socioeconomic factors. So how do diversity and resilience um, relate to socioeconomic factors? We're also studying aquatic habitats. Um, so we're interested in how the functioning of urban watersheds depends on the type, extent, and configuration of urban nature. And again, how the benefits and burdens of urban watersheds are distributed across different socioeconomic groups. Uh, we're also exploring how land use management and climate change interact to influence pollutant impacts on lakes and streams, um, taking care, advantage of the comparative approach that we can, um, that we can take when we have um, hundreds of, of uh, different lakes. So on the social side, um, we're interested in understanding the coupled relationship between urban nature investments and wealth inequality, both in the past in terms of historical investments and also in response to future policy intervention. And we're under, interested in understanding the role of advocacy in improving policies and practices related to disparities in environmental outcomes. And here we're taking advantage of the fact that we have these hundreds of municipalities that again, allow for a comparative approach. And so kind of throughout all of this, we're trying to um, make space for taking an inclusive community engaged research approach and understanding the impacts of that approach. And because of the theme of this science council, I thought I'd say just a few more words about that. So, so um, we're attempting to listen to and learn from communities that historically have kind of been left out of the picture as far as engagement with research in the Twin Cities. Um, and at the same time, we're using that as a research opportunity to try to understand how this engagement changes both the researchers who are participating in it, as well as the research that um, ends up being conducted. And so there are some challenges and opportunities associated with doing this. And I think these are themes that both Jonathan um, and Craig um, kind of alluded to. And that is like, how do we make time and space to build trust and lasting relationships with community partners that allow for knowledge co-creation and sort of flexibility in research and redirection um, within the context of 
you know, this NSF funded project that emphasizes productivity as measured by conventional products. And that would be something that I would love to chat with more in breakout groups tomorrow. Um, and so our next steps towards trying to achieve this is, you know, first of all, to, to build upon and build new uh, research and education partnerships. So we're assembling a, a community advisory team for the overall project, as well as our, for our individual teams. Um, we're also assembling a teacher advisory group for our school year, schoolyard um, program. Uh, we're working hard right now to develop a, a pretty comprehensive handbook for our project um, that includes all sorts of um, sections that are meant to try to create a transparent and inclusive community, um, but as specifically um, includes best practices guidance for engaging with partners. And then we're also trying to create a, a culture of listening and respect and engagement. And this has really been led by our DEIJ um, task force, as well as um, the research team that is focused on inclusive um, community engaged research. So I'll just give you one example of how we're trying to do that. Um, so about a month ago, we assembled uh, tried to assemble our entire research team. We had about 30 participants um, who came along on a tour of Dakota sacred sites with Darlene St. Clair, who's a scholar from St. Cloud State University. And um, she led us on a tour of three Dakota sacred sites. Um, our research is all being conducted on the historical, cultural, and contemporary lands of the Dakota people. And so on this tour, she helped us understand both the historical um, significance as well as the current relationship between these sites and Dakota people. Um, and so we are going to have a workshop in a couple of weeks to reflect on this experience and to try to understand really you know, go beyond land acknowledgement to, to reflect on what it means for us to be doing research um, on Dakota lands. So that's just one example of, um, of how we're moving in this direction. And I'll stop there. Thanks.